Hey, this is John again. I've got a second part to the wheel bearing video on the 2001 Honda Civic. We're going to switch out the uh, other wheel bearing. This is on the driver's side. And I'm going to use a slide hammer this time. So uh, I'll show you how that goes. Well, the idea this time is to uh, save a little trouble and use this slide hammer to pull the hub rather than pull the whole thing out, the steering knuckle and everything, and then try to separate them. So we're going to try this. This bolts onto the hub. Here's our slide hammer. And then again, we're going to still use our tool here to pull out the actual bearing from the steering knuckle. Okay, one thing I found out was that original bearing puller I showed you a minute ago was not going to fit the hub. So uh, I actually ended up getting this. Again, I uh, just went over and rented this from AutoZone. And so this is going to go on the end of the slide hammer, even though it looks like it's a, you know, it's actually, it's just a self-contained unit. It does thread onto the end of the, of the slide hammer. It's going to go right in here. But just wanted to let you know, be careful because you got to make sure it fits the bolt pattern. So here we're lucky. This uh, fits the bolt pattern. Obviously, here's the new hub. And uh, next we'll go ahead and try to pull that uh, old hub uh, out of there. Okay, so I've got the puller mounted here to the hub. As you can see, this is pretty tight. I tried to tighten these up as much as I could. 19 millimeter socket. Then I put the slide hammer in here. Tighten this bolt here to keep everything tight. And I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try here with a slide hammer. So here we go. And we can see it's pulling. Can kind of push the uh, shaft, the drive shaft back in there. You can, I don't know if you can see that, but it's coming. There we go. So as, it, as you can see here, it split the race. So you can still see the balls in here, but now this makes it a lot easier to get the rest of the bearing okay, out. So I've got the snap ring out and I've got the puller installed. I will say these snap ring pliers sure are handy to get this snap ring out. Uh, I tried it with just a pair of needle nose pliers right here and uh, that really didn't work too well. So uh, just a little tip here is uh, I'd say get yourself a pair of snap ring pliers. The other thing I did here was uh, if you remember last time in the video, this axle came out too far, so I've used a coat hanger here, wrapped it around here, and tried to, to uh, basically secure it so that it's not coming out this way. Now, I've left these two bolts connected, and I've got the puller in here, um, so I'm about to uh, start cranking on this thing, try to get the bearing out. Um, notice here I put the thrust bearing in between here, and this, I use this solid metal thing here. I don't know if that's going to help. But uh, for some reason, last time, I ended up trashing this uh, thrust bearing so it wouldn't really roll anymore because the loads are so high when you're tightening this. Hopefully, uh, that'll solve the problem. So I'm cranking on this thing. You see, I've got a pretty big wrench on the back nut, and I'm using a pretty big wrench here. And I just cranked until I heard a pop, and I could tell from that that the bearing is starting to move. I can kind of feel the tension on this bolt is really not getting much higher as I'm turning it so I know I'm getting the bearing pushed out into this cup here. Here's the setup to put the new bearing back in. So I've got the bolt back here coming through with a plate that I selected to just fit there. Now here's one of the key things. Okay so here's the new bearing and your, your driving piece here has to be just slightly slightly less diameter than that because it actually has to get into um, this casting to get down so that you can get the o-ring in so it's got to actually pass into here but it has to be big enough to just get on the outside race of the bearing you don't want to push on the inside race so that's what i end up doing with this piece here and then this is what pushes on that now i've got my thrust bearing in there i found this seemed to really help the thrust bearing survived pretty well um, and so I put this in here to kind of provide a nice flat surface for the thrust bearing. Okay, and then I just have a washer and then there's the nut. Uh, oh, and by the way, I did order a new thrust bearing this time around. Uh, I ended up getting this Timken uh, thrust bearing. It seems like it's working really well, maybe better than the uh, original one. So uh, if you have a problem with the bearing that comes with it, this one seems to be working pretty well. Here's how it's going back in. I'm just using this socket to drive it in. It really doesn't take a lot of pressure, and I can see that it's going in right here as it's moving in here. So it, you gotta make sure everything is lined up, and I don't know if you can see that from the video, but it's just going right in. I'm not really putting that much pressure on here. 
key is going to be just to drive it all the way in there until it gets to the bottom and still have room to get that snap ring in.